Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty popular pair of boots. Um, they are known as Gore Rider, or Gore Riders, as we, everybody likes to call them. I mean, there are two boots, right? So it's two Gore Rider, which equaled Gore Riders, I think, right? Right? So uh, we have some very nice effects on these, and let's go over them together and we'll talk about them, all right? So right off the bat, you'll see that they have 162 defense. Now, this does vary a little bit uh, from 140 to 162. Uh, 162 is the maximum. Uh, we also have a strength requirement of 94, which is relatively low, considering these are war boots. War boots usually have a much higher strength requirement. Uh, we have level 47 requirement on these, which is really low, quite honestly, and makes them a good choice for a lot of characters. Uh, just a lot, a lot of characters. Now, we have 30% faster run-walk on these, which makes them very attractive boots. Uh, generally, when, when you come to boots, you would like to have some kind of run-walk on them. Uh, we also have 15% crushing blow, which is amazing, uh, because 15% crushing blow gives us a uh, percent chance, which is 15% chance, to deal 25% you know, in weapon damage, or sorry, in damage, physical damage, to the monster's current HP pool, not their maximum. So the monster has 100 health, you do 25% of 100, which is 25 damage. If they have 10,000 health, it's 25% of that. If they have 10 million health, it's 25% of that. It is a very, very effective ability. Now, it does do less damage versus certain targets. So in PvP, it only does 10% with melee. Um, in uh, a, a boss battle, so if you're fighting a monster that is an elite or a boss, it does 12.5% in melee. Uh, ranged has its own calculations, and uh, in ranged attacks, it, it does half. So it does 12.5% versus regular monsters. It does 6.5%. Uh, 0.25% versus bosses, and 5% uh, versus PvP. Uh, but it is still extremely effective on range characters. Don't let that half crushing blow uh, fool you, because doing 12.5% uh, to a monster's health that has a huge hit point pool is still going to be a pretty massive spike. Now, because crushing blow is a percentage-based damage, it does scale down very badly. So, you know, when a monster's health goes down, for instance, and you're, you know, you're attacking a boss who has 100 health left, crushing blow will apply, but it's only going to do, what, like 12 damage, which is not a lot. So you will notice that crushing blow does more damage when the monster is at full health, and as the monster's health decreases to a lower number, it is going to be uh, sort of less and less. It's called diminishing returns. If you're wondering uh, what's in my shirt, uh, it's Mr. Nini, the chinchilla. He's the uh, he's the channel mascot. He loves to sleep in my shirt. It's his favorite place. Um, he comes out every now and then to say hi to us, but uh, but for the most part, he'll stay in here and he'll just he'll just have a good nap while I'm recording videos. Which is uh, it's nice to have a little buddy with you while you're uh, while you're doing your work. <laughs> so we also have Deadly Strike on these, and uh, Deadly Strike is an amazing ability which doubles your physical damage. Um, so it will stack with other abilities that can do the same thing, like Critical Strike, um, but not, like, on top of each other. So it doesn't just, like, stack cumulatively, like 15% plus 15% is 30. Um, it stacks differently. So if you have a 15% chance of Critical Strike and a 15% chance of Deadly Strike, your Critical Strike will roll first, and then your Deadly Strike will roll second. If your Critical Strike fails... Deadly Strike will have a chance to roll, and if your Deadly Strike fails, then you get nothing. But you have two separate rolls, which make for a higher probability um, than by themselves, uh, which is definitely very nice. Um, so if you're like a Barbarian, or a Sorceress, or anything like that that is um, a character who's wanting Critical Strike, like maybe you're an Enchant Sorceress, maybe you're a Barbarian who's running a uh, very high physical damage setup, um, even Berserk, which is a conversion of physical damage into elemental damage, also helps with this. Um, you can also use this on any character that doesn't have Deadly Strike at all, which would definitely be very nice because those characters uh, have no way of getting Critical Strike. So, uh, so Druids, Sorceresses, Necromancers, Paladins, um, those have no Deadly Strike whatsoever. The characters that do have Critical Strike uh, innately are the, uh, the Amazon, the Barbarian, and the Assassin. So keep that in mind. 
Um, then we also have open wounds. So open wounds of a 10% chance, which, you know, all of these are relatively low percent chances. But you have to think, you're getting all three of these on one item, which is certainly very awesome. Now, open wounds is a very great ability that causes a weapon damage. Um, sorry, a damage based on your character's level. So it scales with you. So at level 47, it's going to be the lowest that it's going to be. Um, and at level 99, it's going to be the highest that's going to be. And the, uh, the bleed effect that it causes is, like I said, based on your character's level, and it lasts for 8 seconds. Um, it will counter things like monster regeneration. And this is one of the things that people really like to have open wounds for, because certain monsters in the game can regenerate extremely fast. Uh, most notably, um, Uber Diablo, Uber Mephisto, Uber Bale, and Pandemonium Diablo. All four of those have extremely high regeneration, and uh, having an effect like Open Wounds can be paramount to preventing those monsters from regenerating all their health back in a matter of seconds. Uh, we also have 200% Enhanced Defense, which does vary from 160 to 200%, so if you're looking for a perfect pair of Gore Riders uh, to upgrade, uh, you are looking for a 200% uh, Gore Riders. Um, you can also... Um, upgrade it for the uh, the kick damage, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, we have 20 to maximum of stamina on these, which most people really don't care about, and then we have negative 25% requirements, which is actually really nice, um, because like I said earlier, these boots are um, the highest strength nightmare boots that you can possibly get, um, and if you upgrade these, they're going to upgrade into the highest strength requirement hell boots that you can possibly get. Um, and uh, if you're wondering what the original strength requirement is on the war boots, it's 125 and, uh, and if you were to upgrade these to the highest version, it would be the Myrmidon Greaves. And the Myrmidon Greaves have a strength requirement of 208, which is very prohibitive. But thankfully, because it has those negative 25% requirements on it, we don't have to worry about it too much. Now, um, the kick damage on these is probably one of the most important things for, um, for uh, assassins. So, uh, as you can see right now, it has a... Um, has no kick damage written on it. And the reason why it has no kick damage written on it is because to see it, just like with the shields, you have to be on an assassin. Uh, so let's go over to an assassin and we're going to take a look at the kick damage on these boots. Alright, so here we are over on assassin. And when we take a look at the gore riders um, in their war boot form, you notice that we have a kick damage of 39 to 80. Uh, 39 to 80 is, uh, is decent kick damage, but if you were trying to be specifically a kick assassin, um, you would probably want higher kick damage than that. Now, there are two options for a kick assassin uh, for extremely high damage, um, and, uh, and those are the Gore Rider War Boots and the uh, Shadow Dancer Myrmidon Greaves, because they're already high level. Now, the Shadow Dancer Myrmidon Greaves have their own specific purpose, and if you'd like to see a video on those, I actually already have it up. Um, and I actually do comparisons to the Gore Riders uh, in that video. But in this video, we're going to be looking at the Gore Rider War Boots. Now, to upgrade these, you're going to need a Lem and a Co. and a Perfect Diamond, um, which is actually a fairly solid upgrade, and I think a lot of people actually um, do this upgrade on a regular basis. Because not only are Gore Riders relatively good boots, they uh, have nice high defense, the kick damage goes up very nicely, and, uh, and honestly, they make their way into a lot of builds. So let's take a look at what um, the Gore Riders will look like when you upgrade them. And uh, I actually already have these upgraded, so no need to go through the process of doing the upgrade. Uh, we have a pair right here, which is the Gore Rider Myrmidon Greaves. So the Gore Rider Myrmidon Greaves are 80, sorry, 213 defense. So uh, let's let's read off the stats real quick before we go forward. So 162 defense, 39 to 80 kick damage, uh, 94 strength requirement, level 47, two. 83 to 149 kick damage, pretty massive bonus there. Uh, 213 defense, which is uh, which is a pretty nice little bump, uh, especially considering that gets multiplied by a lot of skills like Holy Shield, um, Shiver Armor, uh, Shouts, uh, Iron Skin, etc. Um, uh, bear. <laughs> Uh, we also get uh, 156 strength requirement, which is not bad. Um, that's actually the same strength requirement as a, uh, a monarch shield, right? And then we have uh, 72 level requirements. So the level requirement did go up quite a bit. And, uh, and honestly, I think this is probably one of the most solid upgrades in the game. Uh, because if you are a kick assassin, that kick damage is absolutely paramount to getting the um, the massive amount of damage that you would like to get. I mean, you're talking about a massive bump from 39 to 80. 
to 83 to 149. Literally, your top end on the War Boots is only 80. And the bottom end on the Myrmidon Greaves is 83. You're literally three points higher than the top end on the War Boots and, uh, and, and quite higher on the, uh, on the top end there. So 149 over, one, over 80. So very, very, very nice upgrade there for Kick Assassins. Now, like I said, there is another option if you're looking for uh, Myrmidon Greaves. Uh, you can go with Shadow Dancers. But, uh, but I do feel like Gore Riders make a very a persuasive argument because you get the Crushing Blow, the Deadly Strike, and the chance to open wounds. And, uh, and if you are specifically a Kick Assassin, I do believe that the Deadly Strike actually doesn't work on Kicks. Uh, very similarly to the way the Deadly Strike does not work on, uh, on Vengeance. But um, you do get the Crushing Blow and the chance of open wounds. Um, I believe some people have actually said uh, that they sp specifically like to use both of them um, in different circumstances. Um, if I remember correctly, according to uh, the comments on the video, uh, one of the main uses people said for uh, the Shadow Dancers, I believe, was that they were uh, using them for PvP. And um, let me go double check real quick. Why not? We'll read off some, uh, some comments that you guys made. I feel like that's, uh, that could be a fun thing to do, right? So here we go. We got a comment by Sad P90. Um, if you already have good bleed slash crushing blow, Shadow Dancers is the better choice. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. What else do we got here? Uh, a comment by Pharisees. Deadly Strike does not work for kicks, which is what I said. Uh, so it's a wasted stat. Kicks in usually hit five kicks per attack, so you don't need much open wounds. A chance to proc. So again, it's possibly a wasted stat. If you have any other source of open wounds already, they are the only really useful stat is Crushing Blow and Faster on Walk. And if you don't care so much about the walk speed, then Double Upped Goblin Toes might actually be a better choice. 25% Crushing Blow versus 15. Depending on the rest of your gear, you might already have 100% CB or close to it. So it might not be such a great stat. Shadow Dancers seem more like a defensive option. More dex for block. Uh, shadow skills, hit recovery, possibly a better choice for hardcore. Um, so very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of nice comments here on the um, on here. Uh, another one by Tatsumi is Gore Rider is the better option for a pure kicker. Shadow Dancers is more for hybrid slash whirlwind. Uh, so we got a lot of different uh, varying things, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, which ones do you prefer? Do you prefer uh, Gore Riders for your kicks in, or do you prefer Shadow Dancers for your kicks in? Or like uh, Pharisees said, are you using uh, upped three two two times upped Goblin Toes for your kicks in? Uh, they're all uh, very interesting options. Um, the negative 25% requirements on these definitely do make it uh, easier to equip, but if I remember correctly, the Shadow Dancers also have negative requirements on them, which, uh, which also helps in that department. So let's see uh, where we can find ourselves a pair of Gore Riders, shall we? I uh, always like to end my videos with this, so let's go over to Silo's Pen, and uh, we're going to take a look on Silo's Pen, and we're going to look and see where you could possibly locate yourself a pair of Gore Riders. So Gore Riders, we're going to pretend we have 150% magic find. Of course, you could uh, put in your exact number. Uh, we have Players 1. Uh, we're going to go to Bosses. Of course, we're going to sort, sort by probability here, and uh, and we're going to look at uh, Bale and Nightmare. Looks like Bale and Nightmare is your best chance at 1 in 1,233. Of course, Bale is relatively hard to farm, but if you were killing him for EXP anyway, uh, you could certainly do that one. Uh, we also have Andariel in Hell, uh, which is a uh, seems like a fairly nice choice, as well as Mephisto in Hell and Diablo in Hell. So all the Act bosses have a pretty good chance of dropping this. Um... I notice also Diablo in Nightmare is a pretty good chance. That may be a good choice. Uh, one in one five, one in one thousand five hundred and ninety three certainly is not a, a bad choice chance. And uh, and Diablo in Nightmare is certainly easier to kill than Diablo in Hell or uh, Bale in or Bale in Nightmare. I feel like Diablo in um, in Nightmare difficulty is a very easy kill. Uh, generally because by the time you've uh, completed Nightmare, um, you're kind of going backwards and your resistances are usually fine. Um, you know, you've, you've got your scrolls and, um, and your character's really well-rounded. You're kind of moving on toward a uh, sort of a hell difficulty specification. So, so not a bad there. Uh, let's take a look at Super Uniques. 
And uh, we've got the Cow King in Hell Difficulty. Has a really nice chance at 1 in 3,737. Not bad. And Mr. Nini has decided to come out to visit. Oh, no, 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 never mind. He saw the he saw his own shadow and returned. Wait, he's not a groundhog. <laughs> uh, Neolithic in Nightmare. Uh, Neolithic in Hell Summoner. These are not really good choices. Uh, the Countess in Hell has a pretty nice chance at 1 in 11,880. It's not terrible. Uh, Nightmare Cow King is 1 in 13,000. Pindleskin in Nightmare is 1 in 14,000. Uh, that may be a good choice there. Um, uh, despite the fact that he has a very poor chance, you can obviously farm him repeatedly. And, uh, and you could just simply do that over and over again until you manage to, to get your item. Um, I'm also noticing a really nice combination here. Um, Vishibosh in Hell, Rakanishu in Hell, Treehead Woodfish in Hell. Uh, and Bone Ash in Hell Difficulty. Um, these are actually really good, really easy to farm monsters um, that also drop other really nice items. Um, like, for instance, Rakanishu is really high on the list for dropping a Harlequin Quest Crest Shaka. So if you're, uh, if you're hunting for multiple items at the same time, perhaps um, if you're not strong enough to farm in Hell Difficulty yet, but you can at least do Act 1 Hell, uh, Rakanishu, Treehead, Woodfist, and Bone Ash seem like pretty solid choices for a, uh, a low-level Hell Difficulty uh, Magic Find run. Uh, Rakanishu is not really that difficult to kill. Treehead Woodfist isn't that difficult to kill, and neither is Bone Ash, to be honest. Um, although sometimes there are some elite spawns around Bone Ash, which makes him a little bit difficult to get to, but usually killing him isn't that big of a deal. Um, so all in all, it seems like you could probably get these fairly easily um, in Nightmare difficulty, which is probably where you would want them, because at level 47, when you can put them on, that is uh, that is certainly uh, around Nightmare level, because usually by the time you get to around level 30, level 40, you're moving on to Nightmare, and uh, by the time you get to like around level 55, 65, you're moving on to Hell difficulty. Uh, in fact, I even have my, um, my little lists here. Uh, let me pull these up real quick. Uh, so these are the the zones, so leveling by zones. Uh, basically, what this is, is this is an oversimplification. Um, I will never, I would never tell you that this is exactly how it is, and uh, and that you have to follow this list. But what this is is this is a generalization, an oversimplification of where the EXP starts to drop off in certain areas. And I already I've used this many times in many different videos. Um, but you know, essentially at level forty-seven, as you can see, you're in Act Two Nightmare. So, uh, so you know, it's it, you would definitely want to have these before you got to Hell Difficulty, and um, you know, once you've completed Hell Difficulty, or sorry, Nightmare Difficulty, you're you know, you're sitting at around fifty-three, sixty-two. So you shouldn't have any problem um, going into uh, Nightmare Difficulty and killing some of these bosses, like for instance, Pindleskin or Nightmare Cow King. It could be very good choices, you know, for for you to try and get your hands on these boots. You <coughs> you might get lucky. You might get them from uh, from Nightmare Diablo or Nightmare Bale on your way leveling up, which is uh, which is which would be nice. Um, anyway, I don't think there's much more to talk about with these boots. Um, crushing blow, deadly strike, and open wounds. I've explained to death. I even have uh, individual videos on all these things if you're interested. And I've already gone on for 18 minutes on uh, on Gore Riders, uh, but uh, but you know they are really pretty amazing boots. And I think a lot of people wear gore riders into their builds. So uh, maybe they did deserve 18 minutes. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And uh, keep watching.